Welcome to this lesson. I'm teacher Agnes and today we are going to discuss how we can apply GCD and LCM in real life situations. Yes, you always ask yourself, why do you have to do math? It's because you need it. You can actually apply it in real life situations. So we are going to do this um, in form of questions so that you can see how we apply GCD and LCM in these type of questions. Now, question one, Mary has three ropes of length, 24 meters, 32 meters, and 56 meters. She cuts them into small equal pieces. What is the greatest length of one piece that she can obtain? So remember, she has three different ropes. One is 24 meters long, Another one is longer, 32 meters, and another one is longer, 56 meters. She wants to divide the ropes into small equal pieces, and they have to be of the same length. So basically, we want to determine the length of a piece of rope, and that piece of rope is a division of 24, 32, and 56. Listen to a division. Division leads you to divisor. So basically we are looking for the greatest common divisor. Another thing that can guide you to know whether you need to determine the GCD or the LCM is the word greatest. Greatest from the greatest common divisor. So using any of the three methods that we have learned before, we will determine the GCD of 24, 32 and 56. So in this question, you can use the other method. So we have 24, then 32, and then 56. Now, which number can divide 24, 32, and 56? So we have 2, 24 divided by 2 is 12, 32 divided by 2 is uh, 16, 56 divided by 2 is 28. Again, which number can divide 12, 16, and 28? We have 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 28 divided by 2 is 14. Do we have another common divisor? Yes. 2 can still divide these numbers. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And then 14 divided by 2 is 7. Do we have a common divisor for 3, 4, and 7? No. So the GCD will be equal to, or rather the greatest length of the row will be equal to the 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 times 2, which is equal to 8 meters. So you notice that 8 meters is a divisor of 24, 32, and 56. Now we are going to look at another question. Okay, question 2 of the applications of GCD and LCM. So in this case, we have three charts, like in a urinal, that are set to flush at intervals, to flush water maybe, at intervals of 9, 15, and 18 minutes. If they start by flushing together, after how long will they flush together again? So we have three taps here. One flushes water after nine minutes, another one flushes water after 15 minutes, and another one flushes water after 18 minutes. So at the beginning, they flush water together. So nine minutes later, one of the taps will flush water, 15 minutes later, another one will flush. 18 minutes later, another one will flush. Now, from the time the 9 minutes one flushed water, after another 9 minutes, it will flush water again. So, the question is asking, after they flush together for the first time, after how long will they flush again together? So, there is going to be a time, you know, that will follow when the three taps will flush together. So how do we determine that? So you realize that that time is definitely going to be greater than 9, 15, and 18. 
So it is most likely a multiple of 9, 15, and 18. So what we need to get here is the least common multiple. The least common multiple because the time that will be taken for them to flash again together is definitely a bigger number than 9, 15, and 18. So you realize that the LCM is always greater than the numbers, while the GCD is always less than the numbers because the GCD is a divisor. But the LCM is a multiple. It's obtained through multiplication. So let us determine the least common multiple for these three numbers. And in this case, you're going to use any of the three methods. We can use the least method. Now, beginning with 9, let us list the multiples of 9. 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 9 times 3 is 27. 9 times 4 is 36. 9 times 5 is 45. 9 times 6 is 54, 9 times 7, 63, how far can we go? 9 times 8 is 72, 9 times 9 is 81, 9 times 10 is 90. Let's go up to 10. Let's check for 15. 15 times 1 is 15, 15 times 2 is 30, 15 times 3 is 45. 15 times 4 is 60. 15 times 5 is... Uh, 15 times 5 is 75. 15 times 6 is 90. So at least we have a common multiple between 9 and 15 so far. Now let's move on to 18. So 18 times 1 is 18, 18 times 2 is 36, 18 times 3 is 54, 18 times 4 is 72, 18 times 5 is 90. So we get to 90 again. So of course if we continue we will get other common multiples but we are interested in the least common multiple which is 90. It's a multiple of 9, it's a multiple of 15, it's a multiple of 90. Okay? So, the LCM of 9, 15, and 18 is 90. Therefore, the three tabs will flash together again after 90 minutes. So, after 90 minutes, they will flash together. And then after another 90 minutes, they will flash together. Now, question three, let us read it together. Three bells ring at intervals of 5, 12, and 15 minutes. If they all ring at 8 a.m., what time will they ring together again? So we have three bells here. One rings after every five minutes. So from 8 a.m., it will ring again at 8 or 5, then again at 8, 10, again at 8, 15, and so on. The one that rings after 12 minutes will ring after 8 a.m., it will ring again at 8, 12 a.m., then 8, 24 a.m. Now, the one that rings after 15 minutes, it will ring at 8, 15 a.m., then again at 8, 30 a.m., and so on. So there will come a time when the three bells will ring together again. Now, when you look at that time, it's going to be way more than five minutes, than 12 minutes, and than 15 minutes. Now, remember what we say? The LCM is always bigger than the numbers given. The GCD is always less, or sometimes equal to one of the numbers given. So what we are looking for is for a number that is bigger than 5, 12, and 15, which is the LCM. So 
which method haven't we used? We can use the factor method. So five is a prime number, so it's only divisible by itself, okay? Then we have 12, so 12 divided by two is six, six divided by two is three. Then we have 15, 15 divided by three is five. So five will be equal to five times one, 12 will be equal to two power one, two. Two power two times three power one. Then we have 15, which is equal to three power one times five power one. So remember the rules of getting the LCM from the powers. So LCM will be equal to which factor do we have? Factors do we have here? We have two. There's only one two, two power two. So we include it in the LCM times three. We have three power one and three power one. Now for the factor three, we have three power one and three power one. So that will be three power one times for the factor five, we have five power one, five power one. So five power one must appear in the LCM. So this will be equal to uh, two power two is the same as what? Two times two, which is four times three times five. So four times three is 12. 12 times five is 60. So the LCM of the three numbers is 60. So after 60 minutes, the bells will ring together after 60 minutes. But what is the question asking for? The question is asking for the time when the bells will ring together. So 60 minutes after 8 a.m. So we have 8 a.m. Then we add 60 minutes. So this is 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 6 is 60. So we write 0, then carry 1 hour. Remember, 60 minutes is equivalent to 1 hour. So we have 9 a.m. So at 9 a.m., these three bells will ring again together. So after another 60 minutes, they will ring again together. So we can say that after every hour, these bells ring together. Now, having understood this concept, I'll give you one question that you are going to attempt by yourself. Now, using the concepts that we have just discussed, attempt this question. Three tanks have a capacity of 20 liters, 24 liters, and 30 liters. What is the greatest volume of a container that can be used to empty the tanks completely when full without any remainder? So for this question, interpret it and ask yourself whether you need to use GCD or LCM to solve it. Thank you and see you in the next lesson.